My next guest is Katie Kinder. Katie is the author of Untold Teaching Truths and Hallway Leadership, which is a highly sought, she is also a highly sought after professional learning facilitator and has been an educator since 2006. She brings her message of hope, fun, and real strategies to educators all over the nation. She believes that life is fun and learning should most definitely be fun. A teacher of the year, a top five district finalist, speaker, author, and professional development leader, mom, wife, and a fierce advocate for education. Katie has learned a trick or two in the classroom, so come in and have some fun and hook her students from day one. Welcome to the podcast. <laughs> Hi. Oh my gosh, that bio. We, maybe I need to make it shorter. <laughs> Well, it really speaks to your personality and I've seen you on some other podcasts and, you know, have uh, read a few of your books and just uh, really excited to learn more about your work. Uh, but we'll start off with a question I ask everybody. Tell me about a time when you were in the trenches and managed your call out. Goodness. Um, I think as educators, we're all in the trenches every day, right? Yeah. Um, I think we had a particularly tough year. I think it was back in 2016, 17. We had a lot of things going on in the hallways of our school. We had a lot of fighting, like physical fighting, mm -hmm. uh, things that were happening in the neighborhood that were kind of leaking into the school and into the hallways of the school. And I really think it took just this mind shift of we're going to love these babies, no matter where they come from, no matter what trauma they are witnessing on a daily basis, that we are going to come together and raise these babies together. Yeah. And I think that, that shifted mindset that we've got them, really, we started to see the behavior and the fighting and all of that start to subside. And no longer were, I mean, even the mamas and some of the dads were coming up and getting into fistfights in the uh, parking lot. Wow. And we started, I think we really started and honed in on that family classroom, mm -hmm. family school, community school, to where we started to see, we started to see it subside. And uh, it ended up being one of my favorite years. Um, in the end, but I think uh, I think many of us have stories like that when we are literally in the trenches every single day. We have got our we are just digging in and and getting the work done, and that's our teachers across this nation. Sure. Yeah. No. And and I think, like you said, it's really honing in on um, using some trauma informed strategies, right? Mm -hmm. um, you know, deciding as a school community how you are going to move past those behaviors and also expectations. And like you said, sometimes the parents joining in, but really uh, putting out to the community, um, you know, how uh, behaviors should be and how we're going to interact with each other. So um, evidently you moved past that um, and you stayed in the classroom for a bit longer. Uh, tell me when you moved out of the classroom into full client time consulting. Well, I know I'm still pretty new at all of this. And I do, I miss my kids. I miss my team. It is, uh, this can be some lonely work, even though it's amazing work that I get to be in community with teachers all over the nation and get to meet people like you. And so I started, I wrote my book in 2020, Untold mm -hmm. Teaching Group. And I was doing some internal training for my district. I always did. I always mm -hmm. trained the new teachers. I always was a mentor teacher. And then I had a friend ask me if I would do a breakout at a conference. I'm like, okay. So I started doing some breakouts and it was really fun. And then people would get in line and they would say, you should write a book. And I'm like, yeah, you should too. <laughs> you know. <laughs> and so then when 2020 hit, I wrote it. Okay. And then from there, I, it just started kind of blowing up that I was getting speaking contracts and I was going out and doing some really cool things. And I had to make a really hard decision because it wasn't right that I would be away from my building as much as I was going to be away and then also get a salary and also go here. And sure. so I have a very supportive husband who holds our insurance and does the eight to five thing so I can pursue this dream. And it's been, it's been really fun. Yeah. 
So you told me um, when you started working with the schools, um, a lot of it's uh, mentoring the new teachers in their first uh, two to three years. Yes. Um, so talk to me about um, just some of the things you do, um, especially those people that just need that support getting off the ground and kind of how our landscape has changed also in the past four years in the classroom. Yeah. The baby teachers, that's what I call them. I love my baby teachers. And that is really my heart. My heart would bleed out baby teachers. Like mm -hmm. I love them. And I know that it's not sustainable sure. if we can't keep them. And we are losing them at a crazy rate. Like it's, I think it's 60% post pandemic we lose in the first five years. So yeah. That hurts. And so when I was an instructional coach, before I, I left the school system, I was an instructional coach and the baby teachers were my classroom. And I also had two model classrooms where the baby teachers could come in, any teacher could come in mm -hmm. and watch me teach. And then I could spend the day teaching their class. And mm -hmm. I really think it gave me a lot of like street cred Mm -hmm. Because I really was in the trenches with them. I really was dealing with some of the same, like, and I told my district and my principal at the time, like, give me the toughest kids. Yeah. And they did. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, so I, I had relationships with the parents and I, I wasn't an instructional coach coming in being like, oh, you should do this. No, no, no. This is what I did today with them. And so I think it, I loved the model. And so I really, my hope is to mentor the baby teachers of the nation of the world to let them know that there is hope and that you can survive. And often we find ourselves in this broken sphere mm -hmm. and you can get, you can get upset about things that are not in your circle of influence. We know this. Yeah. yeah. And then you can burn out and then you'll quit. So I think it's really about like honing in on what is in your circle of influence and what do you need to let go? Sure. And I'm also a person like once I mentor baby teacher, they're mine forever. <laughs> so they can come into my, they can text me, they can call me, they can come into my DMs. This happened today. What should I do? And I'm like, well, this is what I would do. I'm not their evaluator. I am not their mentor teacher in their school. I'm not their PLC partner. Like I'm literally someone who is just an island for them. Yeah. And I, I find it to be such a blessing and a privilege to be able to serve them in that way. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, really having that heart for those new educators, um, even though you've left that instructional coach position to continue to support them. So, you know, they stay in the profession and get that support they need because they don't always get that at their school, like you said, mm -hmm. and, you know, also maybe helping them, uh, find a, a position maybe in another school, um, perhaps, sure. you know, coaching them that way if they're interviewing at another school. Um, it might not be necessarily the profession or the subject they teach. It might just be the environment at the school they're yeah, in. Yeah. Classroom management is one of my big things. Like you can manage a class of 36 kids. I know it's hard, yeah. but, um, and, and you can also watch me do it. That's one of my offerings. Like have me in, I'll teach your class. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, um, it's also a way for them not to feel silly. Like I think a lot of our new teachers, they think that they should come in and know everything sure. and or know the rhetoric and all of the acronyms we use. And it's the IEP and the PLC and the RTI and, the, and these baby teachers are sitting there and we're getting a lot of baby teachers that are in their fifties, in their sixties. Yeah. It's a second career yeah. and they don't know what they don't know. We have a huge number of emergency certs, alternative certification. And I feel like they can't raise their hand and be like, I don't know what a PLC is because they mm -hmm. feel, sure. they feel, you know, insecure or silly asking. And so they can ask me and I'm not running to their principal. I'm not telling their team that they didn't know what that was. Like, mm -hmm. so I really feel like that's a, a need that I'm fulfilling for them. And I, I find to be really fun and blessed to be able to do it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So we talked a little bit about your book. Um, you said you wrote it um, during the pandemic. So untold teaching truths, you are mm -hmm. now working on your second edition. Um, you told me in the pre-chat um, you're changing up the cover. Um, so people recognize you by your colorful glasses. <laughs> and when you, do you use glasses on the slide. So 
Talk to me a little the, bit about your uh, first book in the, the update. Well, the teal glasses, Dana, has taken on a life of their uh -huh. own, <laughs> which is so funny because they are just an unintentional logo. Yeah. And I have my headshot. You've seen my headshot that I sent to you are in these glasses. And so I would be just kind of, I have so many pairs of glasses. I have red ones. I have blue ones. I have black ones. I have brown ones. Like I have so many glasses, but when I'm working, these are on. And um, it's funny. I went to dinner with some girlfriends the other day and I showed up in red glasses and they were like, who are you? Like, what is this? <laughs> <laughs> and so I would be hanging out, be getting ready for a session at a conference and some people would walk up to me and they'd be like, oh my goodness, you're our speaker. I'm like, yes. They're like, I recognize you from those teal glasses. And it happened more and more. And then I had several speakers, Darren Pepper, Dr. Pepper yeah. being one of them saying like, you've got to lean into this. Like you've got to throw yeah. out glasses. You've got to make your business cards in the shape of glasses. Like you need to fully lean in. And so I did. And so now it's so funny, Dana, yeah. I will go to a conference and I'm just like throwing out these fake glasses. They don't even have lenses. They're just fake. They're just this color. <laughs> and these people are walking around the conference in my glasses and people like big speakers who have no reason to know who I am yeah. are coming over going like, Oh, I knew Katie Kinder was here because of <laughs> All these people are just like sporting the glasses and sure. it is, it's been really fun. And I just had, I actually just got a shipment today of 600 glasses. <laughs> yeah. Because I have a district who I'm contracting with in the next school year, I'm doing their kickoff and then I'm embedding with their baby teachers, which is going to be so fun mm -hmm. once a month. And, uh, there, everybody's going to be, be in these glasses. When I'm talking to them at convocation, I'm dying and I just, <laughs> think it's going to be so fun, you know, and they can be a real symbol of like, yeah. how you got to really look through this lens of like, mm -hmm. you should be having fun with kids. We should be innovating. We should be taking this very seriously, but we also should be having a lot of fun. And, uh, and it's okay to have fun. It's okay to laugh and smile. You should be. And I think we get bogged down with test scores and this and data yeah. and, and we can really have some really meaningful learning wrapped around curriculum that is fun for kids. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. You know, that's really funny how that came about, like totally unintentionally with the glasses. Right. But now like you're giving away those fake glasses at your uh, PD oh, events what? and all that. So um, what, what can people expect in your updated version of untold teaching truths? Um, I've got how has that changed? Yeah. Well, I've just got some new stories. I updated some of the content. I added some things at the end. And so the glasses, are on the cover now. Okay. And my favorite, my favorite color is blue. And every single classroom I ever taught in, I painted a blue wall. Mm -hmm. Uh, because I'm big into uh brain-based classrooms and what colors kids should see to be feel calm and that kind of thing. And so then I named my company the blue wall. Okay. And then my cut my cover was blue. And now I I added it's gonna be black and I've added the bright teal glasses and there's just additional content as well, additional poetry from students, additional uh, stories that I felt like needed to be included as well. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And your second book is Hallway Leadership. So yes. uh, you told me that's more directed towards leaders. Um, it is. How they can be servant leaders as well. Absolutely. So it really is that like, if you are not a visible leader in your school, and like, that's really all of us, every yeah. single adult that walks the halls of our schools is a leader mm -hmm. and we're leading kids. We're leading adults. We're leading by example. And so we cannot lead from our desk in the yeah. office. We cannot lead from, by doing that, like we have to be in the hallways. And so actually a friend of mine was on a podcast and said, you know, I want to be a hallway leader. And then the very next week I was on the same podcast and he dropped that hallway leader word. And I was like, oh my goodness, that should be a book. And he was like, Katie Kinder, you should make that happen. I'm like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a collaboration of yeah. some of the best in the business. 
-hmm. there's probably, I think we've got 10 people on the book that have chapters and uh, just how they serve and how you, you don't have to feel alone. If you're a principal, assistant principal, superintendent, instructional coach, sometimes it can be lonely if you're the only one. And so I think it's also be in community with us. This is how we deal with hard situations. And this is how you can too. And all of our information is in there. Like we want to be in community with you. And it's really, we're really proud of it. It's really, a, it's a great book. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So you talked a little bit about, um, you got the shipment of glasses because you're going to do a kickoff uh, for a district. And um, you wanted to let listeners know that you, can provide uh, those kickoffs and uh, that you can travel out of state. Um, talk to me about a few of the keynotes that um, tend to be pretty popular um, around uh, the early fall. Sure. Well, I think uh, creating experiences for our kids that will last a lifetime. Mm -hmm. I think that's really important. Mm -hmm. And so I, I really lean into that in my keynote, you know, getting up every single day and doing what is relentlessly right for kids. Mm -hmm. And that's not always easy. Yeah. And that means you're not just letting them play Fortnite on their cell phone while they sit in the back of your class because that makes them happy. No, no, no. Yeah. If we have high expectations for our kids and we expect them to do great things, we're also going to have fun. We're also going to we're going to I just think that we have to all have that mindset of I'm going to do what is relentlessly right mm -hmm. for the kids that come into my classroom. And so my keynote is based on that. And then I do a lot of brain. I do the brain based classroom. Mm -hmm. I also have a family classroom, how you establish this type of family atmosphere in which kids belong. They walk in, they are safe and you really, you just have each other's backs and, yeah. So I, I've explored all of that. Classroom management is huge. I've done big classroom management workshops for all the new teachers in the districts. Mm -hmm. And, and I also customize, like, let's say you need a PLC training or you need leadership training or you need something else. I am happy to bring the fun and the engagement and meaningful learning to you. Yeah. Yeah. So definitely uh, for listeners who uh, might be planning their PD for next school year. Reach out to Katie. Um, yes. You have several offerings, you know, and like you said, it's kind of based on things that you've experienced throughout mm -hmm. um, your teaching career. So um, we've had a great conversation today around um, your books, um, your brand, some of your PD offerings. Out of everything we've talked about, what would you like listeners to remember? Gosh, I want them to remember that we get this one messy, beautiful life. We get one. Yeah. And so we might as well just like drop that mic figuratively and literally every day and go go hard for kids, go hard for your coworkers, yeah. do the things um, that you know are best for kids. Because again, like this life, we get one. And so it's too precious to be sitting behind our desk and barking at kids, we should be making meaningful and fun, innovative learning. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just like you and your personality is. So where can people connect with you and find you online? Goodness, please slide into my DMs. Uh, you, <laughs> you can find me, katiekinder.com. You can come into my Instagram at Untold Teaching Truths. I'm on Twitter slash X at Katie Kinder one. And I'm, it sounds so silly to say it, Dana, but I'm going to say it. I'm Googleable. Google me yeah. and uh, at, come get a pair of glasses at my next session. And I would love to love on all the teachers everywhere. Well, it's been great having you on the out of the trenches podcast today. Thank Thanks you for so having me. It's fun.